I think it would be really interesting to know, I mean, this research, has it been done by Muslims or non-Muslims? These researches have been done by both Muslims and non-Muslims. And there are hundreds of non-Muslim scientists who have done research on fasting. So it's not only the Muslims. More of the non-Muslims do research on fasting. But there are even Muslims. For example, if you read the book, Fasting, A Way of Life, by Alan Cott, he writes that fasting is altogether, it gives rest to the digestive tract as well as the central nervous system for the whole body. And he's a non-Muslim. There was a research done by an Indian doctor by the name of Dr. Shanti Rangwani. And she says that when a person fasts, there's no intake of food. So the toxins are created by the food that you eat. So no new toxin is created. And whatever toxin is there present in the body from before, it gets excreted from the body. So fasting is a very good method of excreting all the toxins from the body and it purifies the body system. Well, it's done by non-Muslim. The research is done even by Muslim. The research done by Dr. Suleiman in the University Hospital in Amman, in Jordan. And he did a research on a group of men and women. There were 42 men and 26 women. And the research was done that they fasted and the changes in the body was noted. And they found out that there was a slight reduction in weight. And there was an increase in the glucose level. But as far as the other components are concerned, testosterone, cortisol, sodium, potassium, urea, all of them remained the same. There was no change as per in the body count, except the glucose level increase and the reduction in the weight of the human being. There were several researches done by non-Muslims. There was a group of non-Muslim scientists who did research in Africa in areas where there were famine. And they realized that people, when they did research, that people who were starving because of famine, and they lived in the same refugee camp. Some people who had food and some people who were starving. But those who were starving, they had less chances of having tuberculosis as well as malaria. So fasting, increase the defense mechanism against tuberculosis and malaria. So it's Allah's mercy, alhamdulillah. Can you believe, because they were starving, it prevented them from having tuberculosis as well as malaria. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> the researches done by non-Muslims, they show that fasting increases the longevity, increases the lifespan, and it has a reversal on the aging process. There was a research done by a Muslim scientist by the name of Dr. Osama Kandil in the Harvard University. Muslim, but in a non-Muslim country, non-Muslim university. And he did a research on patients suffering from cancer. And he tried to find out what way do the cells function, especially the killer cells, which attack the cancer cells. And he did a counting just before they started fasting. And then he again did accounting on the 21st day of Ramadan, then 28th day of Ramadan. And he found that there was a marked difference. After 21 days and 28 days, the number of cells, the killer cells, they increased. And these cells, they attacked the cancer cells. And it shows that even the immunity increased. The defense mechanism of the human being, because of fasting, it increased. And there was another research again done in the same patients. And it found out that the T cells, which are normally required for the defense immunity of the human being, they increase to a gate level. And T cells are mainly responsible when anyone has a disease, they are mainly the soldiers, or they are called the major general of the army that you have. They are the T cells. And they go and they see to it, any disease is there, it goes and try and destroy the disease. And AIDS is the disease which mainly attacks these T-cells. Therefore, it's known as acquired immune deficiency syndrome. So when you fast, these cells increase, and the immunity of the human beings increase. I would like to mention one more research done by a European non-Muslim by the name of Dr. Jeffrey. And what he says that fasting 
is not only done by human beings. Fasting is even done by the animals and the plants. And you give the example, the animals that live in cold countries during heavy snowfalls, they stay separately and they don't eat and they go in hibernation. And there are examples of animals like frog, which go in hibernation. And here they don't eat, they fast. And he gives the example in his book that even the trees in winter, when they don't get water, they're fasting. But the moment later when spring comes, you find that the tree is filled up with colorful leaves, with flowers, with fruits. And he suggested that every human being, every year, should at least fast for 40 days. And we know that it's first for every Muslim to fast in the month of Ramadan. That's approximately 30 days. And further, if you keep the six days of fasting in Shawwal, that makes it 36 days. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our Prophet has already given us this guidance which the non-Muslim European has given us recently. So there are many researches done by non-Muslims on fasting and it's very beneficial for the human body.